Hi everybody, it's Sylvie and Virgil, and it's the next morning. <laughs> um, I took my time getting ready this morning and put on a bunch of accessories and an outfit and makeup that I knew would make me happy because I've been having a lot of really great heavy days recently. Um, and it's been a big struggle. So, I just decided to do the simple things I knew would make me happy. I'm gonna smoke, and then I thought we could sit down and maybe do some divination together and spend some time reflecting on the feelings that I'm holding. Because it's still nice and early in the morning, no one else is awake yet. So, I want to take this time to be kind to myself in that way. Because I know that I need that gentleness, and I know that I need time to feel my feelings. So I'm gonna take it now when it's most convenient for me. Um, and I'm just gonna feel. And I also wanted to show you, Sophie was working on a painting yesterday, just like an art therapy expression of feelings. It wasn't like anything major, but it was dry this morning. So I wanted to show it. Um, Sorry for squinting so much, I'm just a mean blind. Um, it's kind of a celebration of grief. Um, and the cross imagery is obviously like complicated for us religiously, but this is what felt genuine to Sophie last night when she was working through some grief emotions and wanted to celebrate the softness of feeling very tender and very grief heavy um, and so that was what she did and that's what I'm going to do after I smoke which is just taking care of my body I'm gonna hydrate too and then we're just gonna take some time to honor the feelings of my body so I'll be right back hi it's Sylvie and Virgil and I wanted to sit down and talk a little bit about coping with grief because um, I, specifically Sylvie, I am a big grief holder in our system. Um, it's a huge role that I've held for a really long time. And grief is a really big part of our trauma. And so that's shown up in really big ways for me throughout our life. Um, We've coped with a lot of grief and loss, and I wanted to kind of talk about some of those coping skills because I think I spent a lot of my life trying to escape the pain of grief when it came up, um, which it comes up in a lot of different ways and at a lot of times because grief is something that compounds. And when one grief comes up, they all kind of come up complexly and they interact with each other and create new narratives and new stories that are more complex about death and about loss and about mourning. And that makes it more and more difficult to cope as you go through life. But I've found none of the forms of escapism that I have turned to have ever genuinely helped me cope with grief. They've just prolonged my feelings of grief. Um, and so I wanted to talk about a lot of the things that I do now to genuinely feel better on days when I feel grief heavy because I'm no longer just distracting through. Distracting is an important tool and you should be using distractions and coping with escapism in healthy ways, like watching media that you like, talking to friends, doing activities that are distracting to you in ways that are healthy and beneficial and not self-numbing. Um, and also, I have this radical acceptance of my grief when it does come up, that if I'm going to have a day that I am tearful and sad for something, that happened years and years ago that maybe I should be over or maybe society would dictate that I'd already moved on, that I'd already had my mourning period. Um, I don't feel any need to conform to those structures 
of emotional impact of loss because I think loss is complex. It impacts you complexly and it continues to impact you for the rest of your life because you will continue to experience the loss of that person, feeling, experience, whatever it is that you're grieving. You will continue to experience that loss every time you miss that, every time you wish it was there or wish they were there. And a lot of my grief surrounds the loss of people and pets that were close to me. Um, and so that's a lot of the work that I do around grief is honoring those relationships. But grief can be anything. You can grieve the loss of your childhood, the loss of your innocence. You can grieve the childhood you never had or the family members that you wish had taken care of you. There are many ways to grieve. And I've been taking deep breaths. And that's the other thing is the beginning of this video is all just silent clips with music because last night I decided to make a video about grief but I also felt completely nonverbal. So I just respected my need for both. I wanted to make a video. I also was not capable of speaking in order to do it. And so I think showing that respect for my body and my needs is important when I'm experiencing a lot of grief taking deep breaths and sometimes I'll even just literally hold myself. I'll just like give myself a little gentle affirmation and love because I'm not ashamed of the fact that my body has needs and I'm sometimes ashamed to ask for someone else to meet them. That's okay. That doesn't mean they don't deserve to be met. So sometimes I give myself a little bit of gentle love and reassurance. I give myself deep breaths. Oftentimes I do my EFT tapping, and if you don't know what EFT tapping is, EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Therapy. And it's a form of bilateral stimulation, bilateral meaning the two sides of your brain. And it simulates those two sides of your brain to connect them, which helps you with emotional regulation and processing. It also stimulates your vagal nerve which is a very key factor in emotional regulation and processing. These are the key points that my therapist taught me were important, was to do your head, your like kind of wherever on your head feels good, and then your brow bone underneath your eye, like the top of your cheekbone, in between your nose and mouth, in between your bottom lip and your chin. And then you can go down your lymph nodes if you want to, like down your throat and on your chest. And then the last lymph node that I ever do is my armpit. And just like right in between my armpit and my breast tissue. And those are the places that help calm down my body. So those are some of the physical ways that I calm myself down. Also playing with stim toys. I'm pretty sure I have one over here. Yeah, that I was using earlier. This is rose scented um, silly putty. And I love to let my body move in intuitive ways. Sometimes using a stim toy eliminates the shame of moving my body. I don't like when it snaps like that. I prefer when it stretches. Um, I love the way this smells. And that's another thing, using good olfactory stimulation, because smells can really remind us of the past. So if you want to lean into your grief, if you want to have a mourning moment, and you want to have a good cry, you could use a smell that reminds you of whatever you're grieving, a smell that's reminiscent. Um, and if you want to move away from your grief and settle into more regulation, you can use a smell that is grounding to the present that is not reminiscent of whatever you're grieving. So for me, this rose scent, this has really nothing to do with my grief. It's more so just grounding me in the present. And I like the way this snaps too. Um, not when it snaps in half, just when it like crackles, I guess is the better way. <laughs> 
Um, but those are some grounding tools to use. The other thing is that um, storytelling is incredibly important to me as an autistic person who has a special interest in storytelling. Um, I find that finding ways to keep the people I love in my life is incredibly important to me. And so sometimes that looks like me telling stories about them to the people that I know now who did not know them or who did. Sometimes it looks like me making my favorite meals that we shared together or me wearing their clothing. I have this um, big oversized sweatshirt of my dad's that I was wearing yesterday in the video that I put on literally like almost any time I miss him because I just love feeling close to him and I always pretend that these are his arms around me and that's an okay thing for me to pretend <laughs> it doesn't hurt anybody it just makes me feel a little bit loved and a little bit special so finding the ways that suit you I have comfort items from several of the people that I love who I've lost and I hold them close to me and I let myself cry. I feel myself getting choked up now, even just surrounding myself with the comfort items that I have because I miss my loved ones. It's been feeling really heavy in the past couple of days that I can't reach out to the people that I miss, that I can't get, you know, that one hug or that one message. And I have a lot of space for that because that's fucking sad. Of course that's going to make me emotional. There's no timeline on loving someone. And just because some of the people that I love died before I was ready to stop loving them does not mean my feelings are too big or too much. I cry so often over griefs that happened so long ago and I'm not going to stop. Because those people deserve my love still. And I don't care how long they're gone, I'm going to keep giving it to them. And right now, it comes in the form of grief because we are too far away from each other for me to give it to them any other way. But I try to, and that's another form of coping with grief that I've found, is finding ways to show love to the people that you miss because grief is just love and so I leave offerings sometimes I go buy seeds from the grocery store and just go feed the birds because I know it would make my dad happy I think of one of my friends that I lost every time I go get tennis balls for my dogs. And it feels like I'm doing it in her honor a lot of the time. And I think that's good. I love doing things in her honor even if it wasn't that deep. Like, I let things be deep because I need them to be in order to keep the people I love alive with me because that's where I want them to be I'm going to stop there because I don't know if I'm making any sense anymore and I'm emotional so I'm giving myself the space to go cry there might be more to this and there might not be and either way I love you and I hope that you make space for your cry.